Hey guys, welcome back to the studio. Ryan, aka Bloodshot Airbrushing. Alright, actually gonna wrap this guy up. I know I've been saying that at the beginning of every video, but I never knew how long this process would take. Editing, recording, deleting. <laughs> Alright guys. Details, donut, 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 yeah. Alright guys, follow along because number five is when this thing comes alive. Check it out. Alright guys, so next I'm just going to get some tones under the eyes. Some dark tones under the eyes, dark tones under the mouth. Just to make it look like it's wrapping around. Um, I'm going to start building some scars on the mouth. Very similar to what you see got going on on this dude. He's got some gnarly scars like he's been through, uh, well, a battle or two. Um, let's get to it. Nothing to it but to do it. Alright guys, so once again, my favorite go-to color for shadows for darks is my brown purple blue mixture. Five drops brown, one drop blue, one drop purple. And I mix this up into a large quantity. I do hundreds of drops of brown and twenties of drops of blues and purples. But uh, as you can see, I'm just darkening up around the edges, making that lip look like it's rolling around, placing my paint so that it uh, it gives it that 3D effect. I'm all about the three dimensions. I want this stuff to look like it's jumping off the surface. Um, so this is two times the speed um, for the majority of this. Uh, I did speed it up to uh, four times and eight times just to keep this video flowing. Um, this pretty much this whole video is in time lapse, so you're just gonna listen to me ramble on. Uh, hopefully, uh, yeah, I can teach you something as I ramble. Um, rock and roll. If I if I haven't taught you anything, guys. Is rock and roll. <laughs> All right. Um, so we're real time here. Um, just darkening up around the nostrils, making it look like it's got an edge that rolls underneath, an edge that folds over top, and again the darks just give it those shadows. Make it look like there's a, a hole in there. Uh, you know, you could get your finger right in there and grab a juicy slime. All right, that's enough. And now again, where I didn't hit the lips before, I'm just darkening those up, giving some scars. Um, ah, alright, let's move on to the eyeball. Um, so, again, just making it look like there's a brow, a brow ridge with my stencil, giving a nice hard edge. And the rest of this, I'm just going to do freehand. Um, fogging it out, you know, blending into the eyeball, blending around it, actually gives the eyeball more of a 3D effect. It makes it look like it's actually sitting in there. Um, again, guys, I can't stress the importance of thin light passes multiple passes i don't try to get anything in one shot man i go multiple passes and i build it up slowly um under the eye here giving it some tones making it look like there's a bottom lid and again this is real time so uh you see you can barely see the paint even being applied but this is how it's done Slow passes, build it up slowly. Time is your friend, patience is key. And really, if you don't got patience, you're in the wrong industry. <laughs> that rhymed. Alright guys, and I'm not going to go too far here. I'm going to uh, mask out the thickness of the, the pinstripe here, and, and I'm dealing with 16th of an inch. And uh, just to give a panel look to these exhaust well, I guess the ports that the exhaust pipes are coming out of. Um, and the reason why I'm doing this is so that uh, I can spray some paint and just have it look like there's a little bit of a, a lip there, that there is a panel sitting on top of the other panel. Um, so when I do get in here with my paint, and again, my blue-brown-purple mixture, um, pretty much today all I'm using is that and white. So I'll get under here and I'll spray it relatively dark, but if you notice, I'm still putting my paint, there's more paint hit, hitting the tape than there is paint hitting the project. And next I'm going to move on to some shadows. So I like to throw some arrows down just directing where my light source is coming from because these pipes are, you know, a couple inches above the panel I want it to look like. So having those arrows telling me where my light source is always a handy little tip. Um, that way they all kind of stay in the same direction. Um, and here I'm just getting where that 3D panel, where we just masked off, well it never got a drop shadow, so I'm just laying her in. I'm um, actually going to go a little closer 
to the piece because that that's where the pipes would be a little closer to the panel so your shadow should be a little tighter and that'll again help and aid with the 3d effect all right now i'm just darkening up blending everything in giving a nice soft look around the bottoms of the edges so it does look like these well these panels are rolling inwards all right guys now i'm grabbing my stencil from before and i'm just one last time spraying the darks in those edges just to make sure i got a nice contrast of dark on dark that makes no sense. Contrast of dark on light. That makes more sense. All right, guys, now I'm just doing some panels. Um, so I want this to look like it's got some dimensions, like there's an actual louver. So hitting some shadows make it look like there are actual edges to the panel that doesn't exist. Uh, now again, mapping out. And if you notice, if you notice with my pinstripe tape, there's paint already on there. I've used this tape a couple times before. Um, money saving hack. Uh, reuse this stuff, man. Especially the plastic stuff. It can be used a couple times. Um, that's about all the masking I need. I'm going to make sure that my paint, again, stays tight to the project. Um, but more so on the, on the masking tape than on the piece. And like I was saying before, this is how you give it that little panel upon panel effect. I'm just doing some uh, some weathering, making it look like the uh, there's some dirt that got in between the panels and the rain or the weather has caused that to seep down and, and stain the metal. Um, not a necessary step, but if you want this to look like it's old and weathered and busted, then it definitely helps. Now, 3D. 3D. So once I got my panel on there, now I'm just going to darken up some of these edges and make it look like that panel itself has edges. Now guys, if you're more comfortable masking and you'd rather have two hands to do this, feel free. Um, again, I'm doing this for the sake of speed. And notice, I don't do the whole line. Um, I'm doing areas of it, which again, just aid to give it more of a realistic feel. If you ever look at an edge, it's not one solid color. Usually it's got some dark spots, some light spots. Uh, I think that stencil fell on my hands there. Gravity works. <laughs> All right, uh... Just gonna wrap up the last couple edges here. And not to reiterate myself, guys, but nice light passes. Uh, don't try to blast this off too quickly. I'm about three inches away. I'm hitting about three or four passes. All right, now I'm just gonna uh, go over the whole thing and darken it up. Um, once I had my masking tape, and I masked out the first area for the, for the porthole there. Um, it gave me some hard edges, so I'm just gonna blend those out. Um, again, just adding, adding some weathering, making it look a little more realistic, uh, adding some, some definition, some tones to the lip to make it look like it's rolling around. Uh, I'm not using any stencils because I want it to be more of a rounder lip. Uh, I guess we'll keep that in mind if you want more of a hard edge, use a stencil if you want to have a soft round feel. Uh, freehander. And now I'm just going to hit my last, last bit of darkness. Adding the darkness. Uh, and, uh, alright guys, we're on to, uh, some rivets. Uh, rivet, rivet. <laughs> um, so I'm measuring out my distances and whatever you got for your hole. Uh, I picked up these things a couple years ago, but prior to using these dudes, I used to just grab a regular metal washer or a rubber washer would even be better. And I mean, you got a lot of different variances for sizes in the whole washer spectrum. So <laughs> it works. Didn't have a problem with it. I like to hit them a little heavier at the bottom and then just add a little bit of weathering. Uh, then I'll go in with my whites and reversely I'll hit those a little heavier to the top but make sure I hit the whole thing with just a little ghosting of white it definitely brings up this is real time guys so you know repeat um and I just bring my white just a shade higher than where my black was and that just leaves a little sort of a black line underneath it and it adds to the uh, 3d effect makes it look like it's uh, sitting above the paint there now I'm adding some white highlights to the to the edges of the the louver. Again, this is just tricking the eye to make it look like there's light bouncing off something that doesn't actually exist. Um, I think I can hit the top of it too here. Yeah, there we go, and that'll be done. Um, now because I want these rivets, everything here is uh, painted, not a rivet that's put over top of the paint. 
so this was rivets that were put down and then painted over top so I'm going in with a green and I'm just slowly light layers bringing it to the same color spectrum as everything else and I guess there's only one thing left to say quit staring at me <laughs> All right, guys, all that's left is to slap a signature on her. Show you the rest of the pieces. The guns. Ammo box. Latch. There's another one. Duplicate. All right, the uh, side panels. Front fender, rear fender. And the gas tank, which we'll actually be doing a pinup on either side, but I'm waiting on uh, waiting on some artwork from the client, so we're gonna uh, do that at a later date. <laughs> what do you guys think? It's those details, guys. Details. All right, thanks for coming along for the ride. Um, I hope you learned something. If you like these videos, guys, share and tell the world we need an army of airbrush wielding warriors. I won't be satisfied until every one of you is slinging paint. Dewey. All right, guys. Like, follow, subscribe. Thanks for coming along for the ride. Uh, happy New Year. We'll see you guys 2018. Cheers. And what a year it'll be for the Bloodshot Army. You got so much more in store. All right, guys. Lace up them boots and keep them trigger fingers ready. 2018. We got work to do.